Hi, this is Professor Scott Norman, and today we are not at PSU, but we're in my home garage working on my 1957 Dodge truck. Today we're going to learn how to take apart a full floating axle to get to the drum brakes. I uh, drove my truck a couple weeks ago, and after driving it, I stopped and I had a, a, a hot brake dragging smell. I noticed that's why I went around and I touched each uh, brake drum carefully because I knew one was hot, and sure enough, one of the rear ones was hot. Uh, I could put it in um, neutral on a hill and, and, and it would um, move, so I knew it wasn't a really bad drag, but it was still enough to cause it to get hot, which it, it shouldn't have got hot with, with my short drive. And, uh, and, uh, and none of the other ones were, were hot. So, so I went ahead and I took apart the, um, the, uh, the, the, the one that was hot. And uh, when I was looking up the uh, service manual for specifications, I realized there's not really good information as far as uh, taking apart uh, full floating axles on these old Dodge trucks. So I wanted to make a video because it's a lot harder for a full floating axle taking apart if you've never done one before versus a semi floating where you basically just take the tire off and you pull the drum off and there's your brakes. So it's a lot more involved than a full floating axle. So today we're gonna learn how to do that. So if you're deciding if your truck has a, a full floating axle or not, uh, a lot of the old Dodge trucks, uh, either the, um, the, uh, the the 200 series or the 300 series above had uh, full floating axles in it. And so you can take a look at your axle. You can see that you have these extra bolts here holding the uh, axle shaft. This is actually the axle shaft itself. And then the, um, the hub is this piece right here. So you can kind of see that it sticks out a little bit. It has all these extra bolts holding the axle shaft uh, together. I can actually undo all these bolts and pull the axle shaft out and not have to take uh, the tire off or the drum brakes off. But in order to take the drum brakes off, I gotta take the tire off first, and then I gotta take the, uh, the axle out by undoing these bolts right here. And then, and then, and then once I get that out, there'll be um, um, a big nut that I'll have to remove in order to, uh, to pull the hub off, which is attached to the, the drum right here. So on the old Dodge trucks, the first thing is that I'm over on the driver's side. The driver's side, if you notice, they have little bitty L's on all these studs, and so those were a left-handed lug nuts and so when you're pulling off your, um, your wheels, you want to make sure that uh, you are uh, turning the uh, bolt clockwise because they're a left-handed bolt on the left hand side. And, and, and a lot of Mopars uh, had that all the way up until the 70s. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pull these off. So I'll get questions from my students every once in a while. Why left-handed threads? Well, if I have a left-handed thread and if I'm tightening this thread, you know, I have to turn it, you know, I have to turn the, my, my torque wrench, you know, I have to turn it counterclockwise. Well, if I turn it counterclockwise, it's the same direction that is going when the tire is moving forward. So the thought would be is that the uh, lug nuts would not back off when going down the road back in the day. And, and someone finally decided that it didn't matter if they were left-handed threads or right-handed threads on the right side. The lug nuts, as long as they were torqued, would not back off. So, so one of the precautions um, would be to make sure that, um, that 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 not all the threads are are um, are um, left side or left handed. And and the issue you get into is trying to find a left handed uh, stud on a truck like this is almost impossible. The right handed studs are are, are easy. So somebody may re may replace one individual stud if it breaks off uh, with a right handed thread, uh, a normal thread versus a left-handed thread. So that's not something that you, you kind of want to pay attention to. And I don't like other people working on my truck because they don't a lot of times understand, you know, hey, I got to turn these um, threads backwards in order to um, get them off. And so we'll finish this job. Students may ask, do you have to take off the uh, drum brake here in order to inspect your brakes? See, that's an awful lot of work. And the answer is no. So you have a little inspection plate or a little hole right there you can get in there and you could actually shine a flashlight in your and then you could uh, spin your um, your drum all the way around and you can kind of look at the um, look at the um, the lining and see how much lining you have in there. You could actually get a, um, a feeder gauge in there and you could actually measure the clearance between the uh, the drum and the um, and the um, and the in the brake shoe to see uh, if they're uh, out of spec or not or, or, or if they need adjustment. Uh, the uh, the socket that you need in order to uh, pull the lug nuts off 
is a uh, is a one inch uh, socket. Uh, in order to pull the um, the axle out in these nuts right here, you just need a 916th. And so the ironic thing is that these uh, bolts there are normal right-handed threads. So I need to make sure I move my uh, impact over, and we can simply take these off real quick, and they buzz off really quick. I probably don't even really need uh, impact for that. But I gotta look up the way. Go ahead and do that. You want to make sure you don't lose your, your washers here. Once you get all the all the nuts off for the axle, um, uh, these have two threaded slots that make it easy to um, to uh, to pull the axle. If you don't have those uh, threaded slots in there, check. Sometimes they're full of um, brake dust and stuff like that, and you have to clean them out a little bit. But uh, we're going to do that since this truck has that on. The other option would be to take a hammer and um, tap the axle. The hub right there in that area, they're pretty hard, and that sometimes comes out. But it should split right in there. So we're going to use, um, oh, I found two bolts that I just had laying around. You know, they look like they're 3 8 so the same size. I use a 3 8 wrench, you know, just chuck that real quick to see what the size of it is. So it's the same um same size, but but the truck has uh, coarse threads, and uh, these bolts right here. Or, I'm sorry, uh, the truck has fine threads, but the bolts that you need are um, are coarse threads. But we can thread these in, get them started. The other one started. And grab a, a socket. And they normally come out pretty easy. Unless the, the, the holes are uh, boogered up or anything like that. Okay, it's starting to move. Uh, but I had to tap it a few times to get it to move. I didn't want to mess up a hole. Oh, this one's not going through all the way. I see the problem. This one here, this guy here is going all the way through. This one over here. Is not uh, my threads aren't going all the way through on it, so I only have this guy right here is doing any of the work. But it came out. I may be able to pull it now. There we go. So now the axle slides out. You can see right here where this one right here. It wasn't going all the way through. It stopped. Looks like the um, the gasket maybe stopped it. I don't see a hole in the gasket on this one here. This right here had a hole in the gasket and it was able to go through or punctured a hole through the gasket. So, came out. There you go. That's the axle. The, um, the drum and the hub are still connected to the wheel. Once you have the axle out, normally there's a um, <laughs> There's a nut right here, you know, you can see something inside there. And I remember that, you know, I haven't had this apart in uh, 10 years and um, it took me a minute to figure out how um, how that seal came out. I was like, wait a minute, do I pull the seal out from the inside? And but just by accident, what I realized is that this the seal is also a gasket. So if I take a scraper and pull that out, which is a pretty unique seal, uh, um, the seal, also, is like a, a flange also on that too. So that's something that is a little bit unique on that. Make sure you remember which way that came out. So again, flat. So the side that goes in goes in like that. Okay, there's probably a gasket here. I try to be careful with these gaskets. In case I can't get one, I'm going to be able to put this on a piece of gasket material and cut a new one. So I try to be careful with that. Pull that out carefully. Because this will get new gaskets because I don't want a, an axle leak right here and get over my fancy wheels. Okay, so if you look inside there, what you'll see is that you'll see a, um, a nut and uh, that nut is a um, Got a socket here, so 
<laughs> two years ago, when the first time I got that, it was a, a two and nine sixteenth uh, nut, and so I, I went to the local uh, part store. I forgot who it was, but I said I have a, um, a, a two and nine sixteenth uh, axle a nut I need to pull off, and they said, "Well, here you go. Here's an axle nut tool." And so I just I bought it, not even thinking, and I got it and I put it in and. For some reason, it doesn't just quite fit right. And so, um, probably the last time I took it all apart, you know, normally they'll take a, a chisel and a hammer and they'll get on that nut and they'll sit there and they'll slowly chisel it off. And I can see on the uh, nut where, where, that, where I used to chisel it off, I guess, me or somebody else. But this time I was smarter. I knew I was good doing this ahead of time. So I went ahead and I got the, the correct uh, axle uh, nut and it's still a two and nine sixteenths, but but if you take a look at that nut, it's an eight-sided uh, nut versus a hex or a six-sided. So what you're going to need is that you're going to get a, need to get an axle nut that has the eight sides to it, not just six. And we'll see if this thing fits on. Hey, it actually fits on. Makes it a lot easier if you know you're going to get in this. It was only like $30 on the internet, so it was definitely worth me buying because I may have this apart. If I do it every 10 years, I may have to do this a few more times in my lifetime. But uh, go ahead and you can pull that nut off. It should not be crazy tight. There it goes. And so you're going to want to pay attention to how that nut came off. So you can see where somebody smacked it with a, with a chisel a few times trying to get it to undo. So it's a flat side, so the flat side is going to go in. And this flange is going to go go out so flat side goes in next thing that you have is you have a um, oh they call that call that like a lock ring on that but you can see inside there you have yourself like all these little holes and so I'm gonna have to pull this little lock ring out and oh yeah you can see on here where somebody you know dinked with this a little bit with a um, you know, with a pair of, uh, you know, a, um, a chisel or something at one point in time. But this thing has a, um, yeah, should have a, should have a, well, that's a, oh, here you go, right here. So it has that piece right there on it. So that piece right there, right there goes into the slot on the axle so it doesn't rotate. So once you put this in, then those, um, the, uh, the axle uh, lock nuts um, shouldn't rotate. So that's kind of like the lock ring. And then you got another nut, and so so I guess the I guess I don't remember on the day in the seventies and eighties I used to teach with um, Chrysler Corporation on the Dodge trucks. Um, I remember only one nut being in there, not necessarily two, but that's okay. But it's the same same socket. And this one I'm going to use to adjust my um, my bearing preload. So it's a lot easier to use a socket than it is to try to tighten it and loosen it up with a, um, it's a chisel. So like I said, uh, the $35 eight sided two and nine sixteenths axle nut socket is definitely worthwhile. So, okay, so this guy here has, it's directional and so one side is, one side is flat. The other side has, um, there you go, a little protrusion in there that that, that lock ring that has a holes in there is going to sit in this guy and hold this from backing off. Okay, once I have all that out, I should be able to pull my, pull my whole entire uh, hub assembly, my hub assembly here, and my drum, which is all one piece. You can't separate those a lot of times. You know, if you if you if you uh, take a take a hammer and you take all those lug nuts out. Um, uh, you could um, you could separate the hub and the, and the drum if you had to. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. And so we're going to grab a hold of this and try to get the bearing out first. There we go. So here's my bearing. So there's my outer bearing right there. So how so so this outer bearing will get cleaned up and it'll get uh, repacked and uh, re-greased and everything. 
I have to keep wiping all the um, <laughs> grease off my hands every time I pick a part up. And then grab my grub. This thing's gonna be heavy. There we go. Ah, ah. And I'll show you that a little bit. But hey, there is the uh, drum brake on it. And of course, I'm gonna pull this apart and clean this all up on it. Um, well, what I'm worried about right there is if you take a look at this, um, this uh, brake dust is straight. This brake dust has a um, kind of a wet color to it. So a lot of times that is, um, could be brake fluid or grease and that's getting in there and that's causing that to accumulate. But this is a, a dual servo setup. So this thing here, uh, minus the parking brake on it is very similar to a, you know, a modern um, uh, drum brake system. You know, you got the adjustment down here that you, it's not self-adjusting. You have to physically adjust it yourself. So again, it, it, it doesn't have a self-adjuster to it and there's no parking brake mechanism to it, but that's pretty familiar. What I'll do is I will take this apart and I'm gonna peel back here and I'm gonna look, see if I have any um, any axle, uh, or sorry, any brake um, fluid inside the, oh, there's the oops, saw it just spit out right there. That was perfect. So yeah, I see this guy's leaking a little bit. So when you pull those back and all that fluid comes out right there, you know, yep, going to have to replace the wheel cylinders on it. So that's the main reason why I took this one off, is I figured if the other wheel cylinder was leaking, that this one here is probably leaking too. And again, it's probably been, again, at least 10 years since I had these uh, apart. And, you know, you don't, they sit around and you don't, <laughs> you don't drive them very often. So these wheel cylinders are something that's, uh, you know, they will tend to leak on occasion. So the next step would be to take your, um, your drum brakes apart. Okay, when you do these drum brakes, you probably should get some uh, standard brake tools. So this guy right here is a standard uh, brake tool that we'll use right here. And then you got your spring tool, which is this guy right here. So again, I've had these tools for, I don't know, probably 30 years and they're still good for, you know, modern drum brakes and something old. But I'm going to pull off the my return springs. The, respir the return springs will get weak on you after a while, so you pop those off. Take the one. So there is a special tool, students, that pull these off. I see people trying to use them. You know those pair of pliers or something to pull those off. So, so these are the same. And so again, with a brake hardware kit, I'm going to replace the springs. That's just good, good thing to be able to do if you could get them. But they're exactly the same. That's something to pay attention to. Okay, make sure that you got the right ones. Uh, the hold down springs. You're gonna use this guy right here, which is pretty simple. You're gonna put your hand on the back to hold the pin, push down on the spring and turn. It should release the pin. And you do have a um, you do have a, a bottom and a top piece. And I just lost one of them. It must have fallen down. But the, you got a bottom piece and a top piece to this. You gotta make sure you wanna hang on to both of them. Pull the pin out. Do the other side. Oh, there, there it, was. <laughs> it was stuck. <laughs> that's kind of funny. My other piece that I lost, it was stuck right inside here. It fits so good, but that's where it was. So, of course, I have a tray I keep underneath everything. So, the thing falls, falls into an oil pan, you know, so I'm not making a big mess. At that point in time, this whole entire piece should, should come off um, on it. Let's see if my anchor pin, there we go, that kind of pull off. Okay. That you can put either way, it doesn't really matter. At that point in time, let's separate this a little bit. Pull my pins out. And there you go. See your bricks and these, these pads. Aren't worn at all, and you know, I only drive this thing a couple hundred miles a year, so you know, pads aren't so bad. Um, I will pull the um, I will pull the adjuster out, make sure that the adjuster rotates and everything really good. So, the adjuster I'll keep the adjuster I won't replace because it's working just fine, it's not locked up or anything, but these these do get locked up on occasion. And I pour, yep. How there's there's fluid leaking out of that thing, so again, I got a, a, a seal leak, a cup leak. This side over here 
Ooh, it's pretty crusty, so it's it's pretty gnarly. If I grab, there's a whole bunch of this. Like caught snugget in there and everything like that, rust and stuff like that. So pretty bad. And so they get rusted up so bad, one side will work but not the other side. So I'm gonna keep these on, and that's gonna help the um, help keep the um, <laughs> the wheel cylinders in. But one thing I want to do quickly is um, go to the back of my wheel cylinder and make sure I could uh, take that uh, brake line off. Because if the brake line is seized and I can't get that off, then that's gonna cause uh, a bigger repair. Anytime you're trying to pull your um, your inner uh, bearing out before you start just pounding away at it, you want to look at it real quickly and make sure there's nothing in here like a snap ring. So if you notice right here, looks like there's a snap ring here. And I want to pull the snap ring out of there. But that's gonna, if I wouldn't have looked at that, I would have damaged that or broke something taking that out. But that, Snap ring doesn't look like it's directional. Sometimes it has a bevel on it, so you're looking for any bevels or anything like that. And that could go on either way; it doesn't matter. But now I could take a um, uh, take a punch, try to drive that out. I could actually put this. I could actually put the brake um, uh, a drum back on the axle and use the old method of putting the nut on, and then trying to pull it out. But that thing's big and heavy. Um, I don't know, we'll give it a try maybe and see if that see if that old method will work. We'll show you that method and see if that will will do something or not. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is try to remove the inner race uh, and the uh, seal. And so here I got the inner race and the and the seal uh, in this pan right here. And so I take a, a drift and a, or a rod or something you have. This is an old axle pin it looks like or a steering uh, steering shaft. But anyway, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna try to grab this edge right there, the inner race, and I'm gonna try to pop this thing out. And really the seal is the only thing holding it on, but the seal could be kind of tight. Uh, but anyway, uh, this uh, this drum and this hub is so big and heavy, doing the old uh, trick of putting the axle nut on and trying to pull it out that way, just it's hard to do. So I don't I don't attempt to do it on this particular one. I did, and I wasn't having very good luck, and so I was having too much trouble, so it's easier just to pop it out. So I popped out the first one, and we're gonna go now pop out the um, second one, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So let me get in there on that inner race, and snap. And you can hear it kind of go. Get it halfway now. Yeah. I went halfway through. It kind of pivoted on me. There it goes. So again, comes out just like that is what it did. So the so the bearing and the uh, seal comes out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get new seals. I'm gonna get new inner and, and outer seals um, and gaskets uh, for the axle, and then get a, a hardware kit. And then uh, depending upon if I can get the uh, hardware or off the um, off the wheel center, if I, if I get the brake line off and I could get it unbolted, then I'll, I'll order uh, wheel centers, if I could get them. <laughs> if not, I'll order uh, cups and uh, pistons and, uh, and try to rebuild it. Stay tuned. I wanted to give you my Tech Tip 285, and that is, uh, let's say that you're, um, you have your brakes apart, and you're getting new hardware, uh, you're not rebuilding the wheel cylinder, it's, it's, it's not leaking and it's perfectly fine, and, or maybe you're getting the drum powder coated or something like that. Uh, you don't want to leave your, um, your wheel cylinders just hanging out uh, uh, for weeks on end. Uh, uh, they could slowly uh, work their way out and just pop out. And at that point, you're going to get brake fluid all over the place. And, and these old trucks are not easy to bleed. And so um, my recommendation is, you know, put something in the, like the one I have right here. It's just a welding clamp. I just got lightly put in there. That way the wheel cylinders can't pop out. And if someone does happen, um, one of my kids gets in the truck and accidentally pushes on the brake, um, they're not going to have wheel centers come out all over the place. So, so I'm going to clean up my um, my uh, drums and my uh, hubs. You can see that the one right here on my uh, right, I already uh, power washed or pressure washed, and I got all the grease out. I did that the other day, and so now um, the left side of the drum, uh, the one here on on my left, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get all the grease out of it. I'm gonna power wash it really good. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to uh, take a deal, get uh, bead blasted and then uh, powder coated black. And that way uh, they look as good as the front. So hopefully uh, in another few days when I get this stuff back and get my um, hardware and get all my pieces, uh, I'll do another video of it all going back together again. 
This is Professor Scott Norman, and uh, hopefully you liked the video. And if you're looking for more automotive educational videos, you could um, uh, subscribe to my Professor Pitane YouTube channel. And uh, hopefully we'll have part two uh, showing you how all this uh, goes back together again. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day.